After yesterday's episode, someone pointed out to me in the comments that the so-called bootleg team shirts I was making fun of are actually representations of Hawaiian culture. Zapdos is a chicken, Articuno is a nene goose, and Moltres is a kiwi. That's actually really cool, I had no idea, so I just want to say thank you Alan for letting me know. Today I learned, and now so did all of you. Today's episode starts at the end of the day, with a lesson on something a lot of people have asked me about. Curveballs. You guys have probably noticed that I throw curveballs every time I'm catching a Pokemon. There's been a lot of speculation and research on whether or not curveballs actually increase your chances of catching a Pokemon, but so far nothing's been conclusive. The only thing we know for sure is that you get 10 bonus experience for catching a Pokemon with a curveball. For me personally, the reason I throw curveballs is because it's just easier when playing with one hand. To throw a curveball, you spin the ball before throwing it. If you spin counterclockwise, you want to throw to the right. If you spin clockwise, you throw to the left. Personally, I like to do things quickly. One spin, and throw. The reason I like to spin once and throw is because it feels like one fluid motion. I feel like I have a lot more control that way. When you're spinning the ball for a few seconds before you throw, it's a lot harder to throw at the same angle every time. When you do it in one fluid motion, it becomes muscle memory, and you can hit the same angle perfectly every throw. I'll only ever use three different fingers to throw. My right thumb, my right index finger, or my left thumb. I'm right-handed, so my right thumb is naturally the most comfortable for me to use, but I'll use my right index finger for Pokemon that are farther away when I need to throw the ball harder. And since most of the time I'm holding the camera in my right hand, I've learned to use my left thumb also. When you're throwing a curveball, the angle is always the same. The only thing that changes is the speed at which you release the ball. I'm going to use Snapchat to show you the pattern that I'm drawing when I throw a curveball. Basically, it's like drawing a backward six starting from the inside. I'm going to use this cat as an example. So, if the ball's here, the pattern I'm drawing is backward six every time. Sorry cat, I don't actually want to catch you. I'm allergic. But you are cute. Give me that. If the Pokemon's closer, I'll release quicker, and if it's farther away, I'll drag my finger a little longer to throw the ball farther. If you hold the ball before you throw, you can watch the circle change size and try to time your throw after the Pokemon attacks or jumps, or really just throw it whenever, if it's standing around like this. That's my secret to quick and easy curveballs. Just draw a backward six, or if you're throwing to the left, a regular six. With enough practice, it becomes muscle memory and you won't even have to think about it. I hope that helps, I hope you enjoy it, now let's get on with the episode. Today was a nice family day, so there's not a ton of gameplay, but it was still a lot of fun and I hope you guys enjoy it. We're going snorkeling again today. I'm gonna get another chance at trying to get a picture of a Pokemon underwater. But besides that, this is probably my favorite place on this entire island to go snorkeling. So, should be lots of nice underwater footage for you today. Gotta walk through the jungle to get down to this beach, which is cool because I actually like trees more than sand. And apparently there's also a bunch of unmarked graves around here, so yeah, what's up y'all? Let's go.
No underwater Pokemon today, but acai bowl. I think I'm just gonna have to make a special trip to get this underwater Pokemon picture and not try to tack it on to snorkeling because snorkeling is just so much more important than getting a picture of a Pokemon. But I'm gonna make sure it happens before this trip is over. Back at the condo, it's time for a nap. ran a little long so I'm not gonna make it back to the plantation today but we're here in Lahaina which is a Pokestop hotspot there's lures on there's a ton of Pokestops I'm gonna eventually fill up my eggs again so I'm gonna have to go hatch them again before I go back to the plantation but I'm just gonna stock up on items while I'm here One tree. Three poker stops. One tree. Well, one poker stop for the tree. But three in the area. Okay, that's it for Family Sunday. We're back at the condo now, and I'm gonna go for a walk, try to hatch all my eggs and clear it out again so I can test the nest egg theory tomorrow. See you guys then. Today I want to start by teaching you guys something that's pretty simple but really useful and it's something a lot of you have been asking about. How and when to dodge in battles. I'm here at this windmill gym and I'm going to use the Charizard and Arcanine here to help explain my point. I'm just going to battle the gym first and then put the footage up here so I can explain it clearly because if I'm trying to battle and talk at the same time, I'm not doing either one effectively. The first thing you need to know when it comes to dodging effectively is that you'll get a warning every time damage is about to occur. 